Welcome to Learn Dirty with Mark. In this video, we're going to learn how to query Parquet files on S3 with DuckDB. Now, I got the inspiration for this video from a blog post written by Pete Hunt and Sandy Riser showing how to use Dagster to build a poor man's data lake. Link is in the description below. And if we scroll down the blog post, you can see in the middle that the center of the architecture are DuckDB and S3. And I thought, oh, well, I've got a S3 bucket that's got a bunch of parquet files representing New York taxi rides. Let's try and query that. So we're gonna start up our DuckDB CLI and we're gonna store uh, anything created in mark.duck.db. And what we need to do next is we need to install and load the HTTPFS extension. Well, without that, we'll only be able to access files locally. Once we've done that, let's configure our S3 credentials. And don't worry, uh, I've already expired uh, all the credentials that you see uh, on the screen. Uh, I found that for my user, I needed to make sure I had the following IAM policy set up. So I need to have list bucket and get object access for it to work. Now let's start by writing a query that just does a count on the June 2022 parquet file. Uh, and so what we can see is we've got 3.5 million uh, records. Now, there are generally two ways to work with the data if you don't want to have to keep on typing out the name of the, the Parquet files that you're interacting with. So the first way is we can create a table which creates a local copy of the data on our disk. And there's a really good blog post, which I'll include in the description as well, which shows all the techniques that are used to compress that data to try and get it as small as possible. Uh, so let's give that a try on the June 2022 data. And we're going to have a little timer in the bottom right hand corner uh, down here so we can see how long it takes. Uh, and so if we run that, remember, it's pulling down all the data and then creating a version of that locally. Uh, and so you can see it takes roughly just a bit over 25 seconds, 26 seconds uh, to do that. Now, just for comparison, let's see how long it takes for a local file. So exactly the same file, but on my machine, let's run the same query. And this time it's only 1.3 seconds. And so most of that work presumably is uh, going over the network and pulling stuff down to our local file system before creating a copy of it. Now let's have a look at the second way. So this time we're creating a view over the data rather than a table. Uh, and this, this means it's not actually pulling any data around down at all. It's just creating a wrapper around that query. And it means if we do anything on the view, it's going to run the query every time. Um, so if we create the view, it's almost instant. It's not doing anything. Uh, but now let's see what happens if we do some queries against the table and against the view. So let's start by working out the passenger count. So what's the most popular number of passengers to be uh, in, a, in a taxi? Uh, so we run that query on the table. It only takes 30 milliseconds. It's so fast. And we can see it, one person is the most common, then two, then three. And we can see there's zero in there as well. So that's either a data error or there are some empty taxis driving around New York. What about if we do the same on the view? And we'll time it again. And this time it's taking just a bit under 700 milliseconds. Uh, so it's not too bad, right? I guess we didn't have to scan the whole file. Otherwise, we'd be expecting a time more than 20 seconds. But what happens if we do do a query that does a scan? So this time, we're going to find just 10 rides, so the first 10. Uh, if we did it on the table, we can't even, the, count, the, the timer doesn't even get anywhere. It's zero milliseconds. And if we do the same on the view, uh, this time it takes a bit longer, right? So it's now it's up to 3.5 and 3 seconds is where we end up. Uh, because it's presumably having to do like go and pull down like a bunch of that data so that it can return it to us. Uh, and so I sort of ended up like concluding that if I'm doing lots of queries and scans, probably want to use a table. But if I'm doing ad hoc stuff and, and ideally if it's aggregations, then a view is probably perfectly fine. So that's the end of this video in which we've learned how to query Parquet files on S3 using DuckDB. If you found the video useful, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any ideas for new things that we should cover, uh, please let me know in the comments and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.